Hey, this is News From Heaven. Why did God make so many people? Why is there so many of us? <laughs> did God bite off more than he can chew? Because it seems like there's a ton of people and is every single person receiving the attention they need? It isn't life chaotic and or don't a lot of us feel like we fall through the cracks? Isn't there a lot of interpersonal conflict and problems that that could be indicating, wait, what? Is this going a little too far? We have so many people, and there's just going to be more and more people. Why is God doing that? And is God sacrificing quality of life for the individual to have so many? I mean, you'd think, couldn't it be like, okay, there's, maybe there's a thousand people. There's God, and there's a thousand people. And it's like, wow, every person eventually can like know every other person well. And okay, maybe that's claustrophobic because if you're thinking of life going on forever, what if there's a hundred thousand people? Okay, think of there's a hundred thousand people. That way, even if you're living forever, like there's so many people, you might meet them all, but they're all growing and you just would never really feel like, ah, oh, there's nobody out there to, to talk to. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. What about a million? A million is so, we, but yet we have just living today, what is it? Seven, eight, nine billion people. We, nobody knows how many people there are because there's so many. What's God doing? And what we're going to look at here today is that actually that that having so many people and having it continue to go up is part of the plan and actually an essential part. If if we didn't have this, we couldn't connect. You couldn't have a connection with God where it's like, okay, it's just us and, and just us and you. That it has to be it's this big group and we're inviting more and more people in all the time. And uh, that's hopefully going to be able to give us some peace of mind when we realize that, look, w there is a reason for things. And things are good and actually it's great that there are other people in the world that instead of being a competition for resources or love this is actually we are together make going to be able to make all of us god and all the people make more happiness than we could if there were less people this is from the book last judgment starting at number six you can download this for free on swedenborg.com every divine work aims at what is infinite and eternal. So how do you know, like you look at something, is this a real Rembrandt? How do you know, is this really the handiwork of God? I'll tell you what the, the trademark is, what the stamp is you look for on the back. Every divine work aims for what is infinite and eternal. Well, I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. So let's unpack it a bit. This is shown by many things. Okay, we're gonna get an example because it always has to be that if you're talking about these divine concepts that are everywhere, you know them already. You've seen them in things. Maybe you didn't think of labeling that way, them that way, but they're there. This is shown by many things that occur both in heaven and in this world. Okay. In both, okay, here's the first one. In both, there is never anything that is exactly like or identical to anything else. Okay, that it's that is a property of God that we're going to make a ton of stuff, even st stuff, even like we got. I'm going to make a bunch of these dots. None of them is identical. So it is with all things. Wow, there is never a face exactly like or identical to any other, and there never will be to eternity, because. Sure, you could say, wow, like, can you believe there are 9 billion people? I don't even, how many, first of all, I don't know how to come to that estimate, but I don't know what the, I know it used to be 7, isn't it more than 7 now? There are 7.351984 billion people in the world. Isn't that a lot? Wow. And then you think about all the people that came before, how many billion are we at? That's so many people. That's nothing. Because how many more people are we going to have added in a hundred years, in a thousand years. There are so many people, but yet somehow nobody's face is ever going to be the same. Nobody's face is ever going to be the same. And that is not sure. I mean, it has to be tied up in the, the number of variables that go into anyone's face, but it's also because that is what God is. Nothing is ever going to be the same. By the same token, there is no one whose character 
is exactly like that of anyone else's. As many people as there are, and this same is true for angels as well, don't forget, people turn into angels. That is how many different faces and different characters there are. So not just you look different, but the way that you think about life and the way that you feel, your motivations, the, the sum total of your motives and actions and wisdom and experiences, whatever it is that goes into making a character, ain't nobody going to be you ever. Despite the fact that there are countless parts that constitute the body and countless feelings that constitute the lower mind, let's, yeah, let's up the ante a bit. No one person ever has anything exactly like or identical to what is within anyone else. Despite the fact that there are countless parts that constitute, okay, we've got it. Countless parts constitute the body, right? You, you know, everybody knows you got a hand that looks like, what has it got, like six or seven parts? No, like within your hand, there are quadrillion, trillion, bajillion, probably, different little parts in there. Countless feelings that constitute the lower mind. So all, even your perceptions and thoughts and ideas, even in the outer, the lower mind, nobody has any single thought is exactly like yours. This is why every individual leads a life that's different from the life of everyone else's. And not just your life as in where you were born and what your favorite memory of the beach is. We're talking about the kind of uh, approach you bring to life. Nobody has that. The same holds true throughout the physical world. Oh, come on. I mean, I guess I already foreshadowed this with these dots. The same holds true throughout the physical world in all, in all its details. So nothing, even in the, I guess, even in like the atoms and stuff, Swedenborg is saying, is ever exactly the same. Why? Why is this happening to us? The, same, the cause underlying such an infinite variety and in absolutely everything is that everything originates in the divine, and the divine is infinite. Because you might be saying, wow, isn't God going to run out of ideas for faces and people and things soon? But that's fundamentally trying to understand God, who is infinite, from a finite perspective. And we start saying, okay, let's try to make one thing, then let's try to make more things, and then do we run out? But God starts with infinite things. There's no such thing as we're going to run out because you can't, just, just let that sink in that that's part of what God is, is infinite. It doesn't matter how many people you've created. There are infinitely more people waiting there. There are more designs for people or whatever, however it is that people get started. That is what God is. That's the difference. That's one of the differences. There's more between us and God. This is why there is some image of the infinite everywhere. Why bother to take that and put it into everything? That is why there is some image of the infinite everywhere, so that the divine will look upon everything as its own handiwork. Actually, come on, I gotta highlight this stuff. Why are we having so much stuff and so many people so that the divine will look upon everything as its own handiwork? Okay. And everything, being the work of the divine, will look toward the divine. So two key things this does for us. First, let's God's recognize God's self in everything. Yeah, that's mine. I don't know exactly why you need that with God, but it sounds like it's important. This is the one I want to dwell on now. Number two, you know what I'm talking about. Everything being the work of the divine will look toward the divine. That infinity, it, it is what allows us to look toward God. If we didn't have this infinite-ness around us, infinite variety in what's created, infinities of time, we couldn't approach God who is infinite. That this is, and we're going to get into more, exactly how that plays out in heaven, which is the coolest part of this, and why it's great news that there's more and more people, even if you already thought it's great that there's a lot of people. This makes it even better. To illustrate how everything in the physical world looks toward what is infinite and eternal, 
Let us just take the following rather mundane example. This example kind of sucks, but let's do it. <laughs> Every seed, now this example is actually awesome. Every seed, whether it is from a fruit tree, grain, or a flower, has been created in such a way that it could multiply to infinity and go on forever. There you go. Who doesn't know about seeds? In there is the image of God. One seed leads to many more, 5, 10, 20, or even 100, and each of these leads in turn to as many more. Let this fruitfulness from a single seed continue unchecked each year, and in just 100 years, it can fill not only the whole surface of this earth, but the surfaces of tens of thousands of earths. By the same token, these types of vegetation have been created to go on forever. This shows us then how they contain an image of what is infinite and eternal, and it is the same in all other cases as well. I get that. I get what you're talking about. Because we have here, you don't think about it, you just think of, oh, there's plants again. And oh yeah, they scatter a bunch of seeds and only a few of them grow. Well, only a few of them grow because there's these you know, ecosystem limitations, there are limited resources, there are competing species, there's predation and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, any given organism would just, just the code is built to just fill everything. That it, and with some species of plants, it would happen very quickly. That you're just multiplying at this amazing scale. There's nothing, as far as I know, written into the code, the DNA in these organisms that says, okay, there's, you know, just reproduce for 100 million years and then you're done. Or just reproduce until there's a, you know, whatever giant number. I already tried to make a giant number this episode. It didn't go that great. Reproduce until there's Googleplex of you and then we're done. That's enough. It's infinite. Yes, things are checked by the, the environmental, but as far as just what the mission is for each organism, go to infinity and keep re reproducing forever. So this is an image of God, that go everything from God, just think about it, everything, like if you just plopped a plop of God right here into my hand, it would have this tendency to do infinity, to expand to infinity, uh, to uh, fill to go forever and to go forever in each direction in some way that's what that's how you recognize what god is and that might sound not that charming when when it's a blob but what about if it's love what about if it's the happiness of an individual person and god is planning to increase that in infinite variety forever what if it's you know a, a heaven which we'll get to oh right now the heaven of angels here we go. Why did God make so many people? The heaven of angels is the reason why everything in the universe was created. Because a heaven of angels is the reason for humankind, and humankind is the reason for the heavens we see above us and the planets they contain. So this, okay. So this divine work, the heaven of angels, looks above all toward what is infinite and eternal. Mm. And therefore, looks toward multiplying without end, because heaven is where the divine itself dwells. We were all nodding our heads about the plants and the seeds and the, those things. Yes, they go on and they go on and go on. Okay, there's an image of God in that. There has to be that image of God in heaven. Heaven has to be this thing, which is, which is even more so than a particular plant, the point of existence. It has to be saying, we are expanding f and existing forever. We're going forever in time and we're going forever in space. We are growing forever because you think about you're getting up to that speed and then you're zooming along at that infinity speed. Now you're moving you know, in parallel with God. That is by achieving that state. Now you're in the state with God. The best thing that comes to mind as an analogy is you know that if you you can achieve weightless uh, the the experience of weightlessness in an airplane if you I've never done this it would be fun but I think this is a real thing where you go up in a, and you're not in outer space but you're just way up in the air and then the plane takes a man I think this is real I hope it is plane takes a big dive and because you're falling you know so much so fast inside the cabin you can float around like it's zero gravity. So you're creating this like, okay, it's like we're in outer space because of what we're doing here. This is like this infinite and eternal expansion of heaven is like your God. I mean, it is mimicking 
it is uh, or, or corresponding with God's infinity. So that each individual only in that state of here we are and part of this state is that we are growing to infinity, then we start to think and feel like God. We can conclude from this that humankind will never come to an end. Because if it, because if it did, if we said, look, it's too crowded, this, you know, the pool is too crowded in summer, we got to get, we got to stop, the heaven is too big. If it did come, wouldn't it be better if it was just those of us who got into heaven, we're the great people, let's just hunker down and say, this is plenty. Look, there's, you know, 35 billion people here. This is plenty. If the humankind came to an end, because if it did, the divine work would come to a halt at a specific quantity and would cease to look toward infinity, that God couldn't be God anymore. (laughs) Wow, this is just hitting me right now. God couldn't be God. God has never looked at what we're doing here with the human race in terms of a finite goal. That there is always, this is a permanent state, doesn't matter how great heaven gets, doesn't matter how big the human race gets, God is always looking out to infinity and like that's where I'm headed. And who knows what that's like, but it's, but with us, with our participation, we know like, look, we're, we're, we're on this journey. We're on this journey with God and there's a p- plenty of home and rest in it, but we're always moving forward. We're always on this journey with God. And you can't, you can't say it's done. It's like a shark. Sharks got to keep swimming. The human race and God together are like a shark. If the shark doesn't swim, it can't survive. So it is that we are expanding and God is perfectly equipped to do this. Because you could say, wait a second, is God going to be able to handle all that? What about when there's, when there's literally like a thousand trillion people? Can God really handle that? Uh, that's what, it's nothing to God. Because you're thinking of a thousand trillion as a big number, but next to infinity, it's nothing. It's not even, it's like, is there anybody even there? So I don't know what it's like, but I, you know, I think God's got it because this is God's wheelhouse and this is what God does. And hopefully you can take home with you a little sense of, hey, my own life, my own little world is going to expand to infinity because all the little bits of goodness and truth that I have, you know, the, the kinds of happiness that I have, the things that, that make me glad to be alive, those are something now, but there's going to be more and they're going to be deeper and bigger. And that within you, there is an infinity of possibility that God can continue to grow happiness and joy in you forever, which should lead to this feeling of like, oh, whatever my problems are now, whatever I feel like, oh, I can't come back from this. I'm, I'm too damaged for this or things will never turn out good. It's all nothing. You, you think about the, the place we're heading towards. Uh, it's just going to be so awesome. Not that it's just like, oh, nothing is going to, everything goes along with it. That's why it's not like, okay, there's a whole new stock of people now. There's a whole new stock of people now. It's the same, even the people who have been First people who were ever people, I don't know how that worked, but you think about people from 4,000, 5,000 years ago, they're part of this journey with us. You know, it's growing. So it is the stuff that you're working on now. It's going to be there, but it's going to be part of this amazing going forward. If that's not by pumping you up, then I better stop talking <laughs> because maybe it's not, I'm not explaining it well. If it is, let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day that is infinitely better than yesterday and that tomorrow is even better still. See ya.